In this brief video, we shall explore the really interesting phenomena of gallbladder pain, but without gallstones, a condition called gallbladder dyskinesia. Now, this is a rare condition occurring in less than 1% of patients with gallbladder symptoms. But firstly, to understand this, we have to explore how the gallbladder works. So here's a cartoon drawing in front of you. Here's the liver. The liver has the bile tube coming out of it. And attached to the bile tube is the gallbladder, which is a sac-like organ. And the function of the gallbladder is to excrete bile down the bile tube, which it has stored, and then to make it available for food coming down this way so that fat in the food can be more easily digested. Let's review the contractions the gallbladder has to make. And these sort of look something like this, where they are synchronized contractions, getting rid of the bile that has been stored down into the bile tube. Interestingly, the bile tube then carries on with these contractions to propel the bile down toward the small bowel. Now, all of this happens in a fairly synchronized manner. Now, let's see what is different in this condition that causes pain. So let's look at the symptoms first. Typically in this condition, patients report pain that is very much like gallbladder type pain lasting 30 minutes or more. Uh, it's severe enough to stop them doing whatever activity they are doing. It tends to come back usually at another day of the week and it is in response to the kind of food that they may eat especially fatty food or dairy product. What sets it apart from typical gallstone pain is that when an ultrasound scan is performed or an MRI scan is performed there are no gallstones. It is a diagnosis of exclusion and there is no one test that will definitively say that the patient is suffering with gallbladder dyskinesia. So what are the things that we need to worry about before we make this diagnosis? Firstly is the patients may have occult stones like biliary crystals or cholesterol deposits which are not easy to see on ultrasound or MRI scan. Patients may be suffering with something else such as a peptic ulcer disease or reflux, irritable bowel or rarely with another rare condition called sphincter of body dysfunction. Now this list is by no means complete but these are the common things that you would want to exclude. And how do we do that? That is by means of performing an endoscopy which is a camera look inside the stomach and the small bowel to assess for peptic ulcer disease and reflux. But the important investigation is the endoscopic ultrasound, where there is an endoscope following the same path as before, but it has an ultrasound scanner attached, which takes very close pictures of the gallbladder and the bile tube assessing it for occult stones, biliary crystals, or cholesterol deposit. Once this point is reached, and the patient has typical symptoms, and none of the investigations reveal gallstones or occult gallstones, then the next step is cholecystography. And what is that? This is an important step in the diagnosis. And what this means is that when patients are fasting, they're given a dose of a dye that is labeled with a tiny dose of radioactivity. And this dye congregates in the liver, and it tends to then travel down into the bile tube and provided that this duct, the cystic duct is patent, it gets concentrated in the gallbladder because the gallbladder stores bile. After a period of time, a naturally occurring hormone called cholecystokinin CCK is given to the patient and what does it do? It causes quite significant contraction of the gallbladder as I described before and causing the dye to be excreted. Ordinarily, you would expect the gallbladder to excrete more than 30% of its contents. And if it is less than that value, then it is quite likely that the patient has gallbladder dyskinesia. However, in addition to the above, there is one important consideration, and that is reproduction of the pain with administration of CCK or with a fatty meal then it is very, very likely that the patient has this condition. And the treatment is removal of the gallbladder by way of a laparoscopic procedure called laparoscopic cholecystectomy. In this procedure, the gallbladder is removed and clips are applied to the duct that connects it to the gallbladder. If the correct sequence of diagnosis is followed, then a high percentage of patients will derive benefit. However, despite best intentions, between 20 to 30 percent of the patients may have recurrence of symptoms. Reproduction of the pain with either CCK or fatty meal 
reproducing the symptoms gives a very high likelihood of success. This ends the brief talk on gallbladder dyskinesia. I hope, I hope this was of interest. If you have any comments, please do share.